All right, we've gone a quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking into sports. Oh, yes, we have Udoka already on standby for sports. Good morning, Udoka. What's happening in the world of sports? Good morning, Olive. Good morning, Osage. A lot of things to actually talk about in the world of sports. And uh, uh, there's a major one happening in Uganda, talking about the Ugandan rugby. And they've been making strides over the past five years, in particular with their seventh programs, uh, just to break into the big leagues. Now, the Cranes got more familiar with the rugby union variation under which the rugby Cranes are a successful brand, especially in the short code of the sevens. Now, some players under the rugby union have clamored for a major change in the administration and how rugby is run in the country. But then one of them who has come out to speak up is Isaac Rujumba. Uh, a few years ago, he was silently expelled from the Uganda rug Rugby Cranes, a training camp ahead of the Rugby Africa 2021 tournament. And he has embarked on a tell-all campaign against Uganda Rugby Union. Now, today, we have Isaac Rujumba, who now plays for Ginger Hippos Rugby Club after playing for the Black Pirates Rugby Club. Now, good to have you with us, Isaac. Thank you for having me, Mr. Udoka. Yeah, um, it's always uh, good to talk about sports and everything happening across um, Africa. But of course, uh, what has prompted you to criticize the Uganda Rugby Union? I mean, it seemed like the, to the world like you had a good relationship with the union. It, it comes from seeing things going wrong for a long time and having a lot of people who have too much to say but no way of airing it out and i'd like to say i'm a voice mm. and yet being a voice alone is not enough the players have stood the coaches have stood many of the chairmen of the clubs have stood and yet change doesn't seem to come so we're left with nothing other than to revolt we're left with nothing other than to do what is out of bounds what no one has done before mm. Yeah. You know, you, I, I remember you tried, uh, you and a couple of your colleagues tried forming the Rugby Players Union, which was not supported over time. Why was this not um, getting the major support that it needed uh, from the Uganda Rugby Union? Because, you see, <clears throat> an oppressor never wants the people to unite because when they do unite, they have the capacity to do things that that will take them out to that will take them out of the give take the power that they have away from them mm. so when we tried to form the rugby players association some years back i think it was 2013 2012 they used whatever was within their capacity to pull us apart involving bribing a number of people to pull them out of it threatening some and at the end of the day, that didn't help us. So we've tried and tried and tried over time, but we're left with no way of airing it out other than with whatever we can. Oh. I remember some years ago you had an injury and uh, you talked about the rugby union supporting you uh, to get a surgery done on that injury, and this didn't get to happen. Uh, was this a major reason why you are taking on the rugby uh, Uganda union? You see, it had been piling up, and mm. this is not just my story. This is the story of multiple players who have given a lot of their life. Mm. I'm not an old man. I'm a very young player. And that is the demographic of most of the players. If you count my age, I'm possibly the oldest player, mm. no, not the oldest per se, but among the older players playing at the time, yeah? So, most of us have gone through a lot of these small, small things that can be changed. And that is what we're fighting for. If, the, can, if, if a rugby player on the national team gets injured and the country cannot afford or claims that it cannot afford to cover this surgery, mm. and yet it has a budget for advertising, that is way bigger than the budget for the clubs that are playing the sport. What does, what does that mean? That means the priorities are not straight. Mm. True. 
All right, Cecilia, I agree with you because I remember you talking about the advertising company that the rugby union did support, and to date we've not seen a major advertisement for rugby in Uganda. But looking at everything that's happened so far, how can the situation surrounding the rug rugby players in Uganda be managed based on your experiences as a player? Prioritization. Mm. Prioritization. And this doesn't even go for just rugby in Uganda. It goes for sport in many places in Africa. You find that priorities are not set right. If you go abroad to many different countries where sport is where sportsmen actually gain from the sport that they play, you will find that a manager of a union for sports, right, and possibly quarter of the salary of a player within the sport, mm. you'll find that health is catered for, uh, uh, basically player welfare is catered for. Yeah. Are you seeing? Here we have a situation whereby the people that manage the sport combine together earn more than all the players combine together. And yet, who are the actual stakeholders within the sport? The players. Yeah. The real people that without them, the sport is not available, the sport will not be there. Those are the players. Mm. You can get new management, you can get new anything for mm. the sport, for the unions. And yet, without the players, the sport does not exist. People will be watching grass on the pitch, standing in the, seated in the stands, just watching grass on the pitch. And yet they are not prioritized. And that is what we are fighting. We are fighting basically for the right, the basic right that the actual stakeholder mm. requires. All right. All right. Uh, we just hope that things are turned around for the rugby players over there in Uganda and all across Africa because it looks like uh, this is a major problem that has to affect uh, sports in Africa. We'll still stay on your story, um, Isaac, but of course, we don't have time on our side. And I'd like to thank you very much for joining us this morning on The Breakfast Show. Thank you for having me, my brother. All right. Uh, um, Olive and Osarage, we keep talking about player welfare in Africa, most especially. And just yesterday, we saw news that broke on social media about the Falconets of Nigeria stranded at the airport. And the NFF later came out with a statement on why the ladies were stranded at the airport. Player welfare is a major challenge with sports in Africa. Very important stories here. Yeah, thank you so much, Udoka Udjoko, for shining the light on this. And Isaac Rujumba for joining us this morning on the conversation. We'll still be having more conversations about this.